Hi, this is Bob Sweeting. We're back here at Art Cars California Performance Transmissions. Art Cars built, been building racing transmissions for over 60 years. We're working on Art's personal turbo T-type Buick. The, the T-type Buicks were turbocharged as there was no vacuum in a turbocharged engine to operate the vacuum power brake unit properly. So after 25 years, the electric motors have burned up and are no longer working. Power brake service has developed a replacement for the factory electric power brake unit. We use the Bosch Hydro Boost, which runs out the power steering pump. So running out the power steering pump, we need no vacuum, especially with a turbocharged car. Now a big advantage besides the brakes working properly as many of these cars are used for drag racing. We found uh, in testing that uh, with the Hydro Boost system running out the power steering pump that the owners of the Bukes can hold the car at drag race starts up to 22 pounds of boost coming out of the turbochargers. This effectively doubles or triples the horsepower when the car leaves the line. Another advantage of the Hydro Boost system since it needs no vacuum and runs out the power steering pump it's able to hold automatic transmission cars above and beyond the rated stall speed of the torque converters. Let's say if our car builds a 3000 RPM stall speed converter, the Hydro Boost can actually hold the car past that. In, in many cases when the brakes are inadequate, the brakes cannot hold the car even up to the rated stall speed. So we're, we're gaining horsepower by spooling up the turbo and we're gaining horsepower by raising the, uh, the stall speed of the converter. Another issue with the Buick Regal is because in the 80s it was kind of the last of the performance vehicles of that era. GM built the car with the same brakes as an S10 pickup. It has the same calipers, pads, brake shoes, wheel cylinders as an S10 pickup. Obviously the car is much faster and much heavier than an S10 pickup. So the only place we can gain brake power is at the booster, which is another advantage, again, of the Hydro Boost system. Art's been in a situation where the electric brake booster failed two years ago, and he just lost interest in driving the car, and it hasn't worked for two years. So he's anxious to try out the Hydro Boost, see how it works against his torque converters, see how much power the car can produce with the Hydro Boost system thrown in. <laughs> We were going to do a pre-test showing the way the stock brakes work and how much boost the car can hold against the stock electric brake booster and at what RPM the torque converter could flash to, but the brakes are not working at all, so we can't do the pre-test. We'll have to just see what the, what the boost gauge shows and the RPM shows with the, uh, the Hydro Boost brake system. I uh, wasn't too excited about the Buick, and then uh, end up that uh, NOS Mike Thermos bought an '87 Buick, and he put nitrous on. They went up to with Carcraft Magazine up to Palmdale, and they were running without the nitrous and with the nitrous, and showing the improvements the nitrous make on a Buick Grand National. When well, the process of doing this these tests, the trans started to leak real bad, so they brought flatbed to me and they said fix it and what you're doing if you can do any improvements on it you know whatever so I put a different converter in it and they took it back up and it ran faster so they printed it in the article well then people started coming to me that had Buicks well I got involved with Kenny Dunweiler and with uh, one car that he did and I started testing some converters and I found one the car ran quicker than any, any of the other Buicks so it turned out that Kenny said every engine he sold, he wanted one of those converters to go with it because it allowed the, the big turbos to spool, spool and they'd run fast. Well, that's how I got involved. All of a sudden, everybody started coming to me for the Buick stuff. Well, then, uh, in 88, 1988, Carcraft called me and said, we want to do a magazine article, a story, and we'll pay you to come up for two days and stay in the Holiday Inn and bring one of your products up there, a vehicle with your products in and run it for two days and we'll put it in the article. Well, I was all excited. So I called Kenny and I said, 
I've been asked to go for this art and he said, I'm going too. And I said, what am I going to do? And he said, well, my wife's Buick has all your stuff in it. We'll just bring it up there and you drive it for two days. Okay, so I drove my 85 Mustang up there. For two days I raced that Buick. I drove home and within a week I'd sold my, Buick, my Mustang and within a month I had me a Buick. And what I did is that I asked Kenny, I said, what, would, what, what should I get? And he said, well, he says, I would get a, a, a T-Type Limit. They only built 1,500 of them versus the Grand National. They built over 22,000. He said, it'll be a rare car as it gets older. So I went out and found that T-Type Limited. I have the white one with the burgundy upholstery in it. And then I took it to him when I bought it, and he put a bigger turbo on it and different injectors and a, changed the intercooler around and did some things to it. And I started going to the races with the Buick Club and racing about three, four times a year and driving to work and back every day. So here's, here I am with my Buick. <laughs> and I finally parked it because I just didn't want to put a lot of miles. I got 80-something thousand. And I go, you know, I'm just going to park it and let it age, you know. And last December, I took it for smog, but I keep it licensed. And I took it for smog, and the guy at smog looked at it, and he said, in two years you drove in nine miles. I said, yeah, I drove it down for smog, drove back, parked it again. No, that's, it went nine miles in two years. So. But uh, it's fun to take it out and play with it now and then. They're very interesting cars. It's been almost 10 years since I raced it, so I, I don't remember exactly. But I could pull quite a bit of boost. Yeah, well that's one of the reasons I just parked it. I've still got all the slicks and everything all mounted, brand new slicks in there all sitting up on the shelf. That's, uh, they're probably so old now, <laughs> they're no, no good anymore. But I did have another Buick, I bought another one, and uh, it had, uh, it was a, it had 108,000 miles on when I bought it. It was an old police car. They used it for undercover narcotics. Never been registered and I had a lot of trouble registering it. Uh, I took that one and we put aluminum heads on Never took the engine out, pulled the pan and just put aluminum heads on it and a bigger turbo. And we took it out to, to Bakersfield and I ran 1160s with it at 118 miles an hour. And uh, then uh, it started to smoke because I was trying to run 25 pounds of boost, and the engine been living on for 108,000 been living on 15 pounds of boost, and it, it took the rings out finally. But the car was fast; we just bolted on some gear, you know. That's one thing about the Buicks. All you got to do is add more fuel and more boost, and they go fast. Yeah. They, you know, through the years, the brakes have gotten to the point you can't you can't hold boost anymore, and so then. Uh, how was it doing before? Well, I ran I ran twelve teens with it, you know, and the car launch is good with uh, it was, but now that the now with the uh, with the uh, way it's worn out, the, the brake system, I'm nervous to drive it. So now Bob's going to put uh, a new hydro boost system on, which I don't know anything about the brakes. All I know is he says it works good, and we're sure going to find out. I get the detail of the engine department, so it looks nicer for doing the tag. Oh, I did. I already got the tag. You smogged it, tag? I'm going to change the pedal inside, too. No, oh, the Ford. The Fords oh, are just a nightmare to do. It's going to be a real chore right now. So this one's yours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like a doctor. Yeah. And the only thing I need to do is to open up the factory bracket about a three sixteenths of an inch to get uh -huh. this nut through, then it uh -huh. bolts right on. Hooks on the pedal. Uh -huh. So now the, the brake system I have now runs off the power steering, right? No, it runs off a 12 volt electric motor. Oh, okay. That's the issue is the 12 volt electric motors have phenolic veins in them. Uh -huh. So when they wear out, it won't pump, or the seal leaks between the uh, pump and the motor, fills the motor full of brake fluid 
which shorts it out. So that's the problem those cars have. Okay. So this is absolutely reliable. All right. The 86 and 87 turbocharged Buick cars used a power master brake system that utilized a 12 volt hydraulic pump to supply 2,600 pounds of pressure to an accumulator, all of which was controlled by this pressure switch. All three of the pump, the accumulator, and the switch were prone to failure due to the high pressure. The advantages of the HydroBoost over the Power Master unit is that it utilizes no electrical connections. It runs off of power steering pump pressure and has an easily replaceable master cylinder whereas you cannot replace the master cylinder separately on the power master unit. First thing you're gonna do in removing the power master unit is to take off the electrical connections. There's one on the pressure switch and another on the motor. Then you're gonna remove your brake lines. We recommend using a tubing wrench so that you don't round off the nuts. You use that to loosen the nuts and then you can use a regular wrench to finish it. And finally you're going to take off the two mounting nuts. We've already removed the hairpin that retains the booster rod to the pedal. We're going to take the booster off by pulling it towards us off the firewall and twisting it so that the pedal, so that the booster rod comes off the pedal.